In this video, I want to explain how to compute the fundamental group of a certain class of spaces called mapping tori. So what is a mapping torus? Um, let's suppose I give you a space X and a map phi from X to X. So given this data, which you can think of like this space with a map going to itself, um, we can form a new space called the mapping torus written M T phi which is defined the following way. You take x and you multiply it by the interval 0, 1 and then you divide out by an equivalence relation where the points x, 0 are equivalent to the points phi of x, 1. So uh, let's see what that might look like. You take your space x, you multiply it with an interval, and then you identify points on this end with points on this end in some way. So for example, if phi was the identity, you're just going to get x times a circle, because you're doing x times the interval and identifying the points at 0 and the points at 1. And we could represent that in this picture where x is a circle uh, by just drawing an arrow like this to say, you know, this circle is identified with this circle so that the arrows match up. And this, this gives you the torus in this particular example. So this is uh, if x is the circle, the mapping torus of the identity is s1 times s1 which is a torus hence the name mapping torus it's a torus like construction that depends on this mapping phi okay another example of a non-trivial mapping torus so this would be a trivial mapping torus would be the same thing circle cross an interval but identifying the sides with uh, uh identifying the the two ends via a map that switches the directions of the arrows, so like a, a reflection. And what do you get then? Well, you get the Klein bottle. I'm trying to glue this circle to this circle in such a way that the arrows don't match up, so you end up having to pull it down and stick it back up through this. That way you can get the arrows to match up. So you get this climb bottle. So to figure out the fundamental group I'm going to make some assumptions about x and about phi. I'm going to assume that x is a CW complex because we know how to figure out the fundamental group of a CW complex. And I'm going to assume that phi is a cellular map. Which means that it takes the n skeleton to the n skeleton for all n. And that's not a big assumption because in fact any map of cell complexes can be homotoped to make it cellular. Um, this is a cellular cellular approximation theorem, so we're not really losing any generality with this. I'm not going to prove the cellular approximation theorem. Um, okay, so for example, in this this uh, example here, you know, if we take uh, this cell structure with one zero cell, one one cell 
then certainly the zero cell center itself, the one cell center itself, so that's a cellular map. Okay, so given a cell structure and a cellular map, I claim that we can write down a cell structure on the mapping torus, and then we can apply Van Kampen's theorem to figure out the fundamental group of the mapping torus because we know how to figure out the fundamental group of any cell complex using Van Kampen's theorem. So what does the cell structure on the mapping torus look like? Well, for each cell of X, I get some cells in the mapping torus. So I start off, just take uh, X times zero and put a cell structure on that, which is the, the usual st structure we put on X. Right, so X is a cell complex that has a cell structure. We use that on X times zero. So in this example, there'd be one zero cell and one one cell. When we multiply with an interval, we also get a one cell from the zero cell one dimension down. Right, so the zero cell in X, let's call it E, maybe I'll do it in red, gives us a one cell which is E times zero one in X times the interval and okay that has to attach somewhere and because I'm gluing this end back to this end via this cellular map phi the other end of this interval goes somewhere in the zero skeleton well there's only one place for it to go but so each zero cell gives uh, of X uh, gives a one cell of the mapping torus of phi whose attaching map uh, maybe I should call this E gives a one cell um, whose attaching map sends one point one end point to E the other to phi of E. We also get a two cell. So from this circle, right, which is the one cell, or for, from this arc, which is the one cell in X, we get that arc times the interval. So each one cell on X gives a two cell and the attaching map of this two cell, well, this end attaches to the blue arc here and the other end attaches to phi of the blue arc. So similarly, one cells on X give two cells of the mapping torus and more generally k cells give k plus one cells for all k. So that gives us a cell structure because now you can see we covered the whole of the mapping torus with these cells. So we get a cell structure on the mapping torus. We needed this phi to be cellular in order for these attaching maps to really attach to the correct dimension of skeleton. So what is the fundamental group? Well, I'm going to assume um, that there's only one zero cell in X. So let's state this as a theorem. Suppose X is a CW complex with 
only one zero cell and we can assume that um, as long as X is path connected because um, then the one skeleton um, will be some graph which we can contract all of the well, a maximum tree of edges if you remember all this stuff um, so that we only end up with one zero cell we proved something like this earlier so suppose X is a CW complex with only one cell and phi is a cellular map Then pi one of the mapping torus based at this zero cell. Um, let's call it x uh, times zero is well. I can think of a presentation for it. So the presentation has generators. Of pi one x, anything that's coming from one cells of the CW complex, and it has one additional generator which I'll call C, and the relations are the relations in pi one x again coming from the two cells. And for each one cell, of x, a new relation. So what is the new relation? Well, let's see where, where these new relations are coming from. If we go up to the picture, you can see the new relation's got to come from this green two cell, right? Remember, when we computed the fundamental group of a cell complex, the generators came from the one cells, the relations came from the two cells. So here, there's a new two cell in the mapping torus coming from a one cell in X. And you can just read off what the boundary of that two cell does. It goes once around the one cell, then along the new one cell here and then backwards around phi of the one cell and then backwards along the new one cell so this straight line at the bottom this is what I'm calling C right so C is the zero cell times an interval This is coming from one cells times interval. So we can read off the new relation associated to a one cell is, like I said before, you go once around the one cell, then you go along C. Then you go backwards around the one cell and then backwards along C. So that is if the one cell is E, oops, you do E, C, E inverse, no, 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 phi of E inverse. And then C inverse. So that's supposed to be the identity right because this is the one cell e this one cell gets mapped to phi of e and we're going to run it backwards and this is c and this is c inverse so i don't actually need to prove this because i just told you how to prove it right you get the generators from the one cells of the cell structure on the mapping torus and you get the relations from the two cells on the mapping torus so rather than prove this, um, 
I'm going to give you an example. Let's work through this example of the Klein bottle. Okay, so pi one of the mapping torus. Phi. If we use this cell structure with one zero cell one one cell, then there's only one generator for pi one of x. So let's call that uh, u. Uh, and then we have a new generator c, which is the one that goes along the bottom or in this picture of a Klein bottle it goes something like that and what are the two cells well the circle has no two cells so there's no relation from that um, and then there's a two cell that goes C inverse phi of e inverse c e equals the identity what is phi of e phi of e is the reflection of e so you see the arrow changes direction and we get e inverse so the presentation is two generators and then let me let me take the c inverse onto that side and i get e c e equals C because uh, phi of E inverse is E inverse inverse, which is E. So this is the presentation I get for pi 1 of the Klein bottle. Another way of writing this would be uh, I could keep the C inverse on this side, stick this E inverse on that side. familiar presentation of pi 1 of a Klein bottle. So that's how you find the fundamental group of a mapping torus. It's going to be very handy when we come to the Vertinger presentation for the fundamental group of a knot complement.